Okay, so let's look at this problem, uh, number 11 in our notes. Uh, it says, refrigerant 134A is to be cooled by water in a condenser. What this really is, is a heat exchanger. A heat exchanger. Uh, we've got refrigerant coming in maybe, maybe through a, a pipe or something. And then we've got water that's just flowing through here this way. Maybe it's a little bit. So, so we've got water that's entering here, it's exiting here, and we've got a refrigerant entering there, exiting there, and they are not mixing. It's just a heat exchanger. All right, so refrigerant is to be cooled by water in a condenser. The refrigerant enters with a mass flow rate of six uh, kilograms per minute uh, and it's entering at one MPA and 70 degrees C. Uh, it is exiting at 35 degrees C. Uh, I think it says neglect any pressure drops, so still at one MPA. And then the water, it enters at 350 kPa a temperature of 15 degrees C, it leaves still no pressure drop, 350 kPa, a temperature at 25 degrees C. <clears throat> All right, we want to know the mass flow rate of the water required, you know, to, to cool this refrigerant from 70 to 35 degrees C, and the heat transfer from the refrigerant to the water. All right. So uh, normally I like to, for steady flow device, uh, Q and W equals delta H plus delta KE plus uh, delta PE, uh, but this has some uh, mass flow rates. Uh, so maybe Q, W dot, M dot, uh, delta H plus delta KE plus delta PE. Uh, but... <clears throat> This, this, this equation is just for one uh, inlet and outlet, but we have multiple ones. So we kind of need to you know, multiply the M2 with the H2 and the M1 with the H1. Uh, so it's more like Q plus W equals M dot two H dot, or sorry, H2 minus M dot one H1. Uh, M dot two KE two. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to go ahead and neglect uh, these KE and PE values um, because they are zero. And actually, I need to sum up all of the inlets and all of the outlets. All right. So for a heat exchanger, there's no work. And the way that I'm doing it, looking at the whole the whole system, the system as a whole, Q is internal. Q is internal, so Q is zero in this scenario, so all of the M mass inlets times their enthalpies equals all of the M mass outlets times their enthalpies. What does that mean? M dot one H1 refrigerant, the M dot 1 H1 water equals the M dot 2 H2 refrigerant plus the M dot 2 H2 water, right? Refrigerant water. Refrigerant water. Okay. Now, the mass flow rate of the refrigerant is the same at the inlet and at the outlet. It's a steady flow device. It's flowing at a rate of six, um, six kilograms per minute. Six kilograms per minute. Okay, so I know that one, but I don't know the mass flow rate of the water at the inlet and the outlet is uh, the same. So that's what I don't know. So I need to know all of these enthalpies. What, what is the enthalpy um, 
going in of the refrigerant and of the water? What's enthalpy going in of the refrigerant, enthalpy of the water? So let's look at these and let's think about these. All right, if I took these two uh, pieces of information to refrigerant, I would find that it is a compressed liquid. Uh, also, if I took these two sets of information for the refrigerant, I would find that it is still a, it is also still a compressed liquid. Uh, and I actually don't have a compressed liquid table for refrigerant, so uh, I need to estimate it. So the H inlet of the refrigerant would be the H uh, at 70, the HF, right? How do we estimate something for a uh, compressed liquid if we don't have the compressed liquid table? The HF at uh, the temperature, at the temperature. All right, so HF at a temperature of 70 degrees C, the HF at a temperature of 35 degrees C. All right, I've got 303.87 kilojoules per kilogram and 100.88 kilojoules per kilogram. So that's for refrigerant, uh, inlet, and outlet. Similarly, for water, if I took these two pieces of information and these two pieces of information, both of those are still compressed liquids. Now water, I do have a compressed liquid table, but that pressure, I don't, it, it is not on my table. So here I'm, I'm also estimating the HF at 15 degrees C for water. Make sure you're at water, not refrigerant anymore. And the HF at 25 degrees C for water. Let's see, HF at 15 degrees C, 62.982 kilojoules per kilogram. And the HF at 25, 104.83 kilojoules per kilogram. All right, and so that, this is for water, the inlet, and the outlet. And so those are the four values that we're going to use down here. Now make sure you have them in the right place. You know, this is refrigerant, and these are both inlets. And there's the water inlet. This is refrigerant, this is water, these are the out. These are the outs. All right, let's see if we can do this uh, correctly. All right, I've got six kilograms per minute. Now, I might want to change that to kilograms per second, but let's see if I need to. I really need to be consistent, right? Units need to be homogeneous, need to be the same throughout. So I'm going to say, all right, the inlet refrigerant temperature uh, was uh, way up here, 303, 303.87 uh, kilojoules per kilogram. All right, the water, the M dot water, I don't know, uh, but it's H is 62.982 kilojoules per kilo, kilogram. All right, so that's the left-hand side, and that equals the right-hand side, uh, the M dot for refrigerant, still kil uh, six kilograms per minute, times its enthalpy going out, 104.83 kilojoules per kilogram. And the M dot, water, which I don't know, but it's the same, so I only have one unknown in this equation, times 100.88 kilojoules per kilogram. So I preferred it for my M, M dot to be in kilograms per second, but, you know, uh, this term could be kilojoules per minute. Uh, if I'm in, uh, if I just keep everything in minutes, then my answer is going to be in minutes or, or per minute. All right, so this is an equation, you know, put all the terms that have m dot on one side of the equation, put all the other terms on the other side of the equation, then, then combine, divide, solve for m dot of the water 
29.1, this would be kilograms per minute. And I'll leave it like that because the question didn't ask, the question didn't specify what units you needed to uh, put your answer in. So I'll leave it like that. All right, so now to find the heat transfer rate, to find the heat transfer rate, I cannot look at the whole system because there is no Q. The Q is equal and opposite. It's internal. So I need to look, look only at water or refrigerant. Look at only one or the other and see the Q uh, for that one. So uh, let's see. I think I'm going to look at the water. Let's see. The Q dot for the water would be M dot times uh, delta H, you know, P and K E. Uh, all right, the Q for the water, the Q that the water gets will be the M dot times the delta H of the water. The Q dot would be M dot of 29.1 kilograms per minute times the delta H. Uh, delta H would be H2 minus H1, just of water. I'm only looking at water. 104.83 kilojoules per kilogram minus 62.982 kilojoules per kilogram. And then this value, Q, 1218 kilojoules per minute. So that would be the uh, Q. Now, uh, I could have looked at refrigerant. It should be equal and opposite. Let, let me just double check. If I had looked at refrigerant, the Q for refrigerant, Q dot would be M dot refrigerant, delta H refrigerant. So the Q dot would be, let's see, the M dot for the refrigerant, 6 kilograms per minute times, what is this, H2 minus H1, H outlet minus H inlet. H of the outlet, 100.88 kilojoules per kilogram. The H of the inlet, 303.87 kilojoules per kilogram. Multiply that through. The Q for the refrigerant would be negative 1218 kilojoules per minute, right? It is negative for refrigerant because refrigerant is losing heat. You know, the water is cooling it off. The water is taking some of that heat uh, and it's positive for water. So either you don't have to do both of them, uh, just do one or the other to find the Q, uh, the heat transfer between the two fluids.